this video we'll discuss about pyogenic granuloma so it usually comes as a short note so we'll uh, learn about it so first of all coming on to the introduction it is a distinctive clinical identity or entity sorry originating as a response of tissues to some non specific agents now the name pyogenic granuloma is absolutely a misnomer why is it a misnomer because it is not associated not associated with pus formation now coming on to the causes in causes uh, either it is due to some microorganisms or it is due to trauma or due to poor oral hygiene or some uh, mucosal irritants all right also in predisposing factors pregnancy is one okay um uh, others other names may it is also called as a uh, pregnancy tumor now uh, let's come on to the epidemiology now age it usually occurs in early age it usually is more in females uh, because of the vascular effects of female hormones and in sight it is more common in uh, gingiva it is actually quite common in gingiva also in gingiva it is more uh, uh, it is more seen in the facial aspect than in the lingular palatal aspect also it is seen to occur on both sides of hope it is visible both sides of interdental papilla then other sides may it can occur in lip tongue buccal mucosa now let's come on to the clinical features now it is a elevated pedunculated sessile vascular mass with a smooth lobulated body surface which is usually usually ulcerated so there are more uh, chances of hemorrhage so tendency of hemorrhage is high now hemorrhage can occur either directly or matlab on a minor trauma or it is basically spontaneously it can occur or it can occur due to a slight trauma now i told you that the other name is pregnancy tumor now this is usually seen in pregnant women because of the hormonal alterations that occur when a lady is uh, pregnant uh, in this what happens is the plaque and the calculus they act as the uh, agents uh, against which the exuberant proliferation in a uh, proliferative response in gingiva is occurring now very important point sometimes in older lesions what happens is there is an increase in the fibrosis due to the decrease in the vascularity and there is a reduction in edema now what happens is they appear as small firm painless nodular masses with no surface ulceration and very little tendency to bleed now this is called as fibro epithelial polyps all right now let's talk about the histopath now histopath is very important and very characteristic and it's quite easy to remember now first of all the very significant point is it resembles a granulation tissue except it is exuberant and ve uh, well localized now sometimes the epithelium thickness 
is increased in cases of ulceration now very uh, characteristic feature of pyogenic granuloma what we see is uh, that there are uh, endothelial cells that line the vascular spaces i will show you uh, suppose this is our blood vessel and you will see some endothelial cells actually lying around the vascular space okay now the connective tissue stroma it is very uh, delicate it has fasciculis of collagen and one very important point to mention is the dense chronic inflammatory cell infiltrate that is mainly of pmnl lymphocytes and the plasma cells uh, the amount of uh, them being present will depend upon the degree of ulceration now in the treatment is obviously surgical excision now it uh, it is very commonly uh, seen that it recurs now there are two reasons for its uh, recurrence one is the surgeon he is unable to uh, unable to determine the limits of the lesion due to which it is excised inadequately and it recurs then the second uh, reason could be that there is possible uh, uh, the restimulation of the infection so uh, basically it is reactivation due to secondary infection now let's draw the histopath diagram yeah 